Um, I'm Missy. Adam. Dusty Souls is the name of our setup. <laughs> uh, we were living at the beach and just was like, that would be an awesome name. And we called the bus Dusty and Dusty Souls just sound like people who travel full time. So that's what we do. I'm still in, uh, I'm still arguing the fact of I want to name it Bussy. The Bussy. Because <laughs> our last name's Bussy. <laughs> he wants to call it Bussy. <laughs> Dusty. Well, the kitchen counters, this whole setup was um, something, a one piece we bought from the race store. And then we just, this is pallet wood that he broke down and added epoxy to, to seal it. And then all of these were built out into drawers instead of doors, um, so that you can get to the back of it and everything. We didn't do a stove or an oven because it was so hot in here when we used it in our RV that we decided we wanted everything to be electric. We plug everything in here. Um, it's our skillet and our George Foreman and our crock pot, and we can sit it up here, use it on the battery while we're parked. Yeah, we lived full time, and we've lived in a bunch of different homes. We've lived basically whatever our dreams were, we decided to go get it. We wanted to live in a log cabin, so we did that. We wanted a really big home, so we went and did that. Um, we wanted to live at the beach, so we went and lived at the beach for four months. Um, oceanfront, loved that and just knew that we wanted to keep traveling. Uh, we already owned a travel trailer, so we lived in it for a while, and it just kept having issues, so we decided to um, build Lots a bus. <laughs> yeah, we really wanted it in our own design, too, and with the travel trailer, you they give you floor plans to pick from, but you're still missing your own customization, whether it's a lot of browns here or browns there, and um, we just like what we like, and we didn't want to be put in a box, and so I was like, let's do a bus, and he she, she had a list of things that she wanted me to build <laughs> and she wanted me to do it to the RV yeah in construction a long time you don't start a project in there and start adding to cardboard and yeah. to plastic and um, so I attempted a few changes we put a desk in it we uh, converted a few other things yeah. that after replacing AC units and toilets and water leaks and um, I was like I do this work on a regular home all the time, and I would just want it. I wanted the the core of the structure to be a whole lot stronger. Yes. So I'm like, we're gonna have to start with a better base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was all her crazy idea to do a bus, though. So we came up with a bus. <laughs> He's like a bus is what we're gonna do. Yeah. Like, so wow. we bought a bus, and yeah. then we he said make a list of all the things that you want in it as if it was your home, and so I did, and like the ship lap and the farmhouse sinks and some other things you'll see and. Um, he executed it best he could given the space we have. So, so on the countertops, we were we tossed around a whole lot of ideas, but she had the farm sink, so it was like bring about the farm idea. And if you go to buy regular countertops for a regular kitchen, they're all 24 inches deep. So I couldn't, I didn't have the option of just ordering specific countertops for this. So we were like just tossed around a lot of different wood. So originally I put, I just cut up some pallets <laughs> and glued them to a piece of plywood, right? Whole piece of plywood on top and I glued it on there in full widths and moisture or I'm not sure what happened, but it all curled up on me. So the tiny boards that you see here is because after it all curled up and peeled off of there, it uh, got put into a table saw. <laughs> And I ripped it all down to something that wouldn't curl up. <laughs> and then I glued it down on there again. And uh, so part of the reason why we used pallet was, was because we wanted to recycle and use as much cool old stuff as we could get. Yeah. And um, so we built those out of pallets, ripped it down three different times. It messed up. One was the curling on the thing and then twice with the epoxy. One was the epoxy went on too hot and it all froze on there like a big mountain yeah. of ice. <laughs> Chiseled that off for three days and then <laughs> um, once I realized it has a certain temperature it has to be at, I put it on there and that time it all poured through the cracks so then we sealed the bottom so it wouldn't pour through and then we did another layer and uh, that was my education on <laughs> epoxy. First time epoxy. It worked out good. These cabinets here came from the ReStore. It was an old entertainment center torn out of a house that someone had custom built them in there. And I picked them because they were only 18 inches deep. And in a bus, you don't have big slides where you can push full size cabinets out away and give you space. So um, we found those. They're a lot more narrow. Even though it was hard to find a sink and a fridge, 
that would fit into that space. We ended up finding them and we cut that. It was a long 18 foot section and I cut it up into pieces and turned it into an L and had to build one more piece right there because that one's modified especially for our, our circuit panel and our switchboard that's all down in that cabinet behind the spice rack that she needed. <laughs> <laughs> the fridge here is definitely um, was a labor of love. We picked a, we went through a lot of RV refrigerators that were propane. She yes. didn't want a propane one. No. Um, lots of different reasons why you don't yeah, the ones we had in the travel trailer, either the freezer would freeze up in the back of it. I and mean, we lived in it full time, and travel trailers are not designed for full time living. It's that weekend where you take them home and they thaw. It sounds great, but when you're in it full time, the freezer would freeze up. And I know you could add fans and things. You can always add stuff to that stuff. We just were done with that. So with the freezer, we, did, we knew we didn't want a big, huge um, over under. She, she said cover no windows, so it had to be low. Yeah, it's <laughs> covering part no of the windows. Design. Yeah, and then the fridge, we just went with something that. It was basically the same size as the bottom half of our RV fridge um, without the top on it. And it seemed to work for us, a family of three, and so we went with that one because it fit under the counters. And then he hooked it up so that it does run off our batteries. Uh, we can run it while we're driving down the road and we're still not connected to propane, so it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, so no propane is hooked to the batteries and it'll last about, what'd you say, three days? About yeah. three days, yeah. And um, so it, and it was hard to find one that was shallow. Most of them were too deep. Um, we had to find one that would fit in the 18 inches that I have on this cabinet here. So, yeah. but it plugged in. It was actually a really cheap one too. I think we gave like 130 bucks, bucks for it or something. Yeah. So we could buy five of them and still <laughs> wouldn't catch up with the price of normal RV yeah. that was another uh, thing refrigerators. Too. So that yeah, was pretty cool. The cost of the RV refrigerators. I even thought about putting one in storage in case that one broke <laughs> and they quit making that yeah. model. Because that's the only one that's going to fit that hole. <laughs> exact dimensions. He put, you know, kind of routed everything around it. So yeah, it'll fit plenty. I mean, you have whole gallons of milk. All your condiments are in there. Um, it's got different layers for like meat, cheese, and things like that. And so then how many? How well, often do we go shopping? Once about once a week we go to the grocery store. And then we also have a DC plug in the back for a freezer. So we have another option back there that runs on battery. If we wanted to take a bunch of meat in the freezer or things like that, we could do that. So it's another reason that we did it separate, the fridge and the freezer, was because I didn't want to give up a window. And that over under, we still have the freezer capabilities, but it's not blocking my window or giving us any um, crowded space up here. So that was why we went separate. Okay, so um, all of the power that we um, ran in here was, of course, the source is down in the box underneath with our... We have four golf cart batteries and a 3,000 watt inverter, and so it's able to transfer that power into 110. Everything in here is 110, with the exception of um, our AC units and a few receptacles. Um, so the the inverter converts all of that power to 110. Even our lights under here, even though they're 24 volts. There might be a couple of them that came in at 12 volts, but most of them are 24 volts. They plug into a 110 outlet, so they don't really use any power um, to speak of. But um, I plugged them into 110 being inverted from, you know, DC power. So that's what I did there. The um, power comes from the box below in the storage bins. I didn't want to do any storage underneath, so I cheated and used the storage that was already under the bus, put all my stuff in it came up through the floor on this side with a conduit and on that side in different areas. Put all the power into, there's a 2 by 4 under here and then this 1 by 12 that's ripped down on an angle and all of the power is in there. And I did it with hinges that are just screwed to this board and pop riveted with this access because we weren't sure what else we'd want to add to it in the future. So I was building to modify the RV is what you always do. <laughs> so with that in mind, these are accessible and worked out good because we ended up add, adding the AC later and I was able just to open them up, put the wires in there and run everything. So all the power is run from the front of the bus to the back of the bus up in these boxes, but it originally originates in the box below. The LED lights came um, about, we wanted something, we didn't want to do regular residential lighting because they're too big and we had got the height of this bus specified to um, for us because we didn't want anything shorter yeah, this would have been a problem. This one is six foot six it was part of the decision we bought one 
yeah. so we wouldn't have to do a, a roof raise, even though yeah. it's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we did. If you put any lights in here, we would have had to put them offset or do the battery RV lights, which we had already tried, and they just weren't bright enough. Maybe they were uh, yellow, or we just didn't like anything. We didn't want anything up here. We wanted to keep it as streamlined as possible. So he routed out the a hole um, along the strip of it. And he added LED lights um, that plug in. Yes, yeah, so there's a two by four that's under there, and I routed just a, a half inch slot in it. And then the LED lights just came in a cuttable strip. We plugged them in on one end. They run off of a switch. Flip the switch on, and those things just stick. It was just an adhesive strip, a 3M strip, and they stuck in the slot underneath here. So then run it down. Each section that we wanted to turn on with a switch, we cut it to length. And that's what the section turns on. Could have run it from the front to the back, all turn on with one switch, but we bought a few different sections so it would break up the lighting through here. But it made good light, even though it's low in the evenings, it's well lit in here. And we added a few extras. These are IKEA lights, these were like desk mount lamps that wired all three of these together in one section, mounted them, and they turn on with a switch yeah. at the end of the counter. So these turn on separate. These turn on separate, and then this one just is right here, just for like when you're at the sink washing dishes. So, and then the curtains came about. I I wanted to, to reuse everything we could possibly reuse. It's already in the environment. Let's reuse it. You know, it's enough people buying and consuming. So our whole concept was, if we could find it, if we needed it, if we could find it, let's use it. So we went to while he was doing the build out. I was going to the thrift store every day, trying to find. Um, these are just sheets. piles of. Yeah, sheets, about piles of stuff. It was all crazy. Like, this yeah. is placemats. Yeah, those are placemats, and then and we just cut them. But these are um, whatever sheets we could find, sheets, pillowcases, pillowcases, baby blankets, <laughs> um, whatever we could find that I thought was cute. And then, like he said, these are um, just burlap placemats. Well, then we put all of this on a table and cut squares for days. And then him and his mom sewed it together. He laid it out, we measured it, and then they sewed it with the machine and uh, that's yeah, kind my of mom did all, most of the sewing. I was just the layout guy, <laughs> so like what, where I wanted it to fit. Oh, yes, so. And then he hung a copper rod here that it just all slides, you know, and so we have the, the open feel of all of our windows, um, but yeah, we can close off when we have the lights on at night. Um, you don't want people seeing in, so you can pull your curtains, but um, and then they come down, they're washable. <laughs> Yeah, they just clip on. So yeah. when we drive down the road, um, if you drop the windows, all the curtains are flying like crazy. <laughs> so it was cool that they unclipped. I was glad that they did. Yeah. Because now we can drive with the windows open and enjoy the, the scenery and Take all that down. stuff. And we just fold them up. Fold them up, and you're all set. Uh, we. She told me when we built this bus. She said, "I want all the windows." We were living at the beach at the time when we decided to build a bus, and the house had all open windows all the way around. She said, I want all the windows to be open. So that was the biggest hurdle because that means like no walls, no, <laughs> nothing over three foot. Yeah. And uh, it really proposed a problem. So I was like, well, I got an idea. If all the windows are open and we're parked somewhere and I want to throw my pillows against the window or lean the broom up here or whatever, I don't want someone to be able to see all of our junk in case we want to live sloppy for an hour or two or whatever. <laughs> so. I was like, I'm going to use a vehicle wrap that they wrap cars with. Because when they wrap the cars, they have on the window sections, they'll just make this stuff with the pinholes. You can still see out of it. So, come up with a funky design. I wanted lime. She said it has to be Carolina blue. Carolina blue. I pushed lime all the way till the day I went down to the place to have it designed. <laughs> I really thought he was coming back with lime <laughs> window coverings. So, we ended up uh, switching to Carolina blue. That one again. And... Um, we faded it up. It has on the outside, maybe get to show you later, The um, it's like a bubble that just fades from the top to the bottom. But we're able to see out. It blurs the vision a little bit, but for what we get during the day in privacy, and um, I actually think it helps a little with the sun, you know, because all your windows can actually cause a huge problem when the sun's beating in from one side to the other. Okay. So if you get rid of a whole bunch of windows, you only have one or two, it's a better insulation thing. So it was a little bit of a sacrifice to keep the bus windows throughout and not still uh, yeah. burn to death in well, here. He designed the pattern with the bubbles to match the blue and kind of go along with what we were trying to do. We liked the fade up option. Um, and he actually cut and applied them all himself, um, which you'll see on the outside. The 
price of the wrap was one and then for them to apply it was the exact price of the actual product itself. So to save that amount, um, they come on a roll and he just cut each one of them to size and applied it. Um, that was a It was a cool. They actually stuff. printed a line onto our print that was the size of my windows. So it actually made the cutting process a little simpler than you would think. But every um, one of them individually but, had to be cut in a So apply. it fades from blue into the white okay. that we did on the top, yeah. which was pretty cool. cool. The uh, kitchen sink is actually a bathroom sink that we found at Ikea. We shopped for, we knew the dimension we wanted. We didn't want it to be deep because we wanted the walkthrough space. We wanted as much as we needed, but no more than that. The only sink that would fit this <laughs> was a bathroom sink from Ikea. And we kind of stumbled upon it um, by shopping online um, based on the dimensions that he said he needed. Um, it works great. Uh, the This thing swivels, so it's good if you have a big pan, um, you know, you can kind of put it in the corner because it does get a little, you know, it's a little shallow. You um, have so to be careful because with a big pot, yeah, you'll you will drown. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so you get it sloshing around in there, you got to be a little bit careful, but yeah. um, the saving of the space in here, I think it changed the whole thing. Yeah. I would say one thing about the depth of the cabinets, even though, like, we had to go with a small sink, um, if you notice in your house, the 24 inch cabinets, most people, if you walk in there, the back 12 inches is all their appliances that are left out. Filled with stuff that they're not necessarily using daily. We don't have any. Yeah. <laughs> we have, yeah. you have the crock pot, electric skillet, mm -hmm. and a George, George Foreman. Foreman. That's and it. that's it. And they go in the cabinet below. When you need one, you get out and you use it, you put it away. Yeah. So the cooking space, I mean, at all the houses we ever had, it's pretty awesome because the cabinets are clear. You get out, you got the whole workspace. Yeah, mm -hmm. work yeah a lot of prep space. Uh, Without lot of, feeling like you lost anything. Absolutely, a lot of prep space. Um, having the plug in there is great. You can cook while you're going down the road because it does run off of our batteries, and anybody can use it. We can also take the electric skillet, George Foreman stuff outside as well. So it still leaves us our counter space. So when we're done. Um, you know, people can come over, we can use this as a stand-up bar and eat at, and you don't have all your appliances in the way. Made um, the build easy because I didn't have to give propane to the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we just didn't want to use that. We have propane outside. I just didn't want to run everything here. I just didn't find it necessary after living in the RV. We knew what we used, we knew what we didn't use, and we just kind of put that into what we wanted in this and got rid of everything else. <laughs> Um, but everything else runs good, you know, the, the sink does good, it does, back to that, it is a little bit of a challenge washing dishes, but um, it's okay. Pros and cons. <laughs> this is our coffee pot uh, area. I guess this, is, a, this is our coffee bar, the whole thing <laughs> summed up in one. When we first got rolling with the bus, we had it sitting over there at the end of the counter, and every time we drove off, we would just put it all away. And, you know, she's got her French press and coffee and cream and cups and everything that goes with it so it got to be a little aggravating putting it all away I was like that into the counter originally I was going to run water to it too but you know you got to quit somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so I added um, this little thing which just has a flip down mm -hmm. counter it braces against there and you can make your coffee here these are um, concrete nails that I thought looked cool <laughs> but they just pin through the side hold the door up and everything, nothing is screwed down in there, it all just sits there and there's a plug along the back side that you know you can plug in even other stuff if you wanted to. Yeah, and that plug still runs while we're driving down the road, we can make coffee, it's the same plug that runs to this one all running off the batteries in the, in the bus. And these cool cool hooks here, she was like, I want you to make them out of silverware because I think it's great. Well it actually worked out really good because I was like, I'm going to make them really long so when you're going down the road and you hit those really big bumps. <laughs> They still hang in there. They stay. So. But they do make a lot of rackets, so a lot of times yeah. we end up putting them down anyway. So. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, don't, you don't need to find a place to put ten coffee cups. There's three of us. There's three coffee cups we could use. Um, we didn't want to use paper. We didn't want to. We wanted to eliminate all that stuff that comes out of a residential home. It just end up with you know two dozen coffee cups. It's not necessary. So we each have our coffee cup, and when you're done, you wash it and rehang it, and that we don't need less. You know, it's less stuff down here. So coffee bar is great and then the this is Cameron's bed our son's bed uh, we wanted everything to be able to fold up kind of like this you want to get it out of the way everything has to be dual purpose um, in a bus because you are dealing with so much only so much space um, we wanted to be able to fold this bed up more people can come in have coffee hang out and we have plenty of space uh, the bed does fold down um, let's see with all of his stuff on it yeah all of his stuff 
Um, so it folds down, and then on the inside you can see he has all of his little um, shelving, uh, all his storage stuff, his bear, his books, and, and whatnot. And then it can also be used um, like basically as a couch um, for people to come in and sit on it. And Not a real comfortable couch, but a couch. <laughs> <laughs> um, it works though, and again, having a multi-purpose is probably the most important thing in a bus, you know. So it gives us the couch without having to have just a couch, because we contemplated the couch, but there was no storage. It left us lacking that storage for him, and we wanted him to have his own designated place in the bus as well. Yeah, we did not want to be folding up bedding and putting it away, and we talked about a um, futon-type couch, but during the day, if we wanted to anybody use it as a couch, that bedding had to go somewhere. So with this, everything folds up in it, or we can sit on the bedding, and it works great. Um, and plus, it, you know, the AC unit here, is kind of not in the way of anybody walking past because you know it's out of the way it's under his bed works out is why the bed went this side and not that side this here is the uh, air that was in the bus when we bought it and so we used it as our driving ac it had two the other one i tried to keep them both because i'm like that's going to be cool to have air when we we're driving it was a plus i didn't know the bus had it and it came from uh, Phoenix, Arizona, so I guess out there it was hot enough where they were like, we should put some air in these. So that was a plus when I got it, but then they were so big, they took up so much room, that messed up my planning from the get-go oh, for a while. All of my layouts, were everything was in the wrong place for them, and um, so I ended up reworking all the layouts because of it. But we decided to keep one of them. We took the one out, and we kept this one because we were like, while we're driving, we are going to need air based on where we wanted to go. And it works really good. It's really cold air. And you can yeah, also it'll, shut it'll this wall, you out. Uh, which we'll show you later. You can actually shut that wall up and actually just keep the air up here. Yeah, too. so the back closed off. Yeah, that kind of happened after the fact. We yeah. were just going to have it just here in the front, but it worked out where the back closes off and it cools the front real it, nice it does for really while we're driving. Yeah. And then um, we have that runs off the engine and we have other AC units, you know, regular. Yeah. RVAC that runs to keep the rest of it cool when we're parked. So this is the bed and then this is the front of the RV. This is where um, me and my son ride while we're traveling. Um, and then this is also... The back seat drivers. Yes. <laughs> back seat driver. um, and then this is a workspace because we do have to do work on the road. Um, he made a, a space for that. Um, the chairs came out of a conversion van. He bought a conversion van while we were in our build out. Um, it had these chairs in it that were specified they were comfortable they had the pockets on the back and he wanted chairs are very chairs. expensive when you go shopping <laughs> for chairs unless you just find somebody who's giving away chairs <laughs> and you're that lucky you're gonna find that it's really expensive so we were like all over the place we even bought them out of some old car yeah. and they were really short and they didn't look right and they didn't swivel and I was trying to build stuff to go swivels they sat there for two weeks with me staring at them like I don't know what I'm gonna do with those chairs so Donating um, those and having yeah. to go another route. She took those to the Goodwill, and one of my coolest stories was I got to drive an old 70s van about 50 miles in the smoking heat. Yeah. So <laughs> with he, no AC. He found the conversion van. van. Good. I found the conversion van based on the seats he wanted. So Just because it had the seats. Yeah, yeah right. so he goes out and makes an offer. We drive about 60 miles in the other direction. Um, buy this, take the seats out, and then he sells the van to another individual without the seats in it. For the same price I paid for the van. Yeah. Got the seats for free. But the person that bought the van didn't want the seats in it because they he were going to put a van awesome. in the back. I want to turn this into an RV back in the back. So it worked out perfect. <laughs> it worked out for everybody. Um, these here are just little tables that we put in here for um, when we're riding and when we're sitting. Um, the front of that table flips down. Go ahead and flip that down. It's, just, it's fairly simple. It just gives you more space when you're riding and you're not using the, um, the space. The and um, yeah. and then this one flips down as well. It's a board. It goes back to the wall and then it drops. Just gives you, I guess, more space when you're when you're just sitting here and not using it. But yeah. she usually has her phone clipped here, giving me backseat directions while we're driving. I'm the navigator. <laughs> Yeah, and, but then he put these little pockets on the sides of, of both. He built they're similar to like a magazine rack. They hold pencils, pens, maps, things when we travel. And then he put plug-ins on each side as well. So when we're driving, if we need to plug in our phones or you know computer, iPad, whatnot for navigation, we have power that runs off the batteries as well. Yeah. So it was cool. Um, I just dropped a single line down 
from the power source that's up here. I bought them on Amazon. They were they had two outlets and three USB plugs. Um, I cut the end of them off and put um, like the flat. I don't know what they're called. Not electrician, but flat wire prongs that just I just put the ends on there and wired them straight to the back of my receptacles. Um, so they're wired in direct on the other end, and um, they work actually work really well. Everybody plugging all their stuff without having to have all the uh, gaudy ends. They have the USBs right on them. Up here is. Uh, the captain's chair. <laughs> uh, this is where I tried to drive this big beast. Um, we chose the front engine for I don't really know what reason now, but at the time I thought it might be easier to work on. If you have to work on them, it's hard. That's just a general consensus. <laughs> Working on your bus is not what you want to do, but sometimes you have to. But over there in that seat, it can get a little bit warm around this engine. so. A lot of times I have a fan running up here in the front and I'm trying to get some of this AC from the back where everybody's telling me how wonderful it is up here to this hot seat at the front. I bought an air ride seat thinking I was going to be riding in comfort and beat them with their chairs and all their comfort back here ends up. It's a, um, a rocket launcher when you hit bumps <laughs> if you have it kind of sloshy and the wheels are behind you. So if you're driving down the road you hit a big bump. It just like through the ceiling you go. But I have a seat belt, so I stay in my seat and it just pulls your legs off. So that's great. But I end up putting the seat all the way to full pressure at the top so it doesn't bounce. So I just sit there and enjoy uh, my hot seat and driving without air ride. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Okay. All right, this is um, a curtain that we made afterwards. We, had, we rolled out without it originally. And then through having sunshine and a lot of uh, heat and I guess just privacy issues when we went um, camping at different campgrounds, I was like, I want something that's going to cover the front. So we were at a grandmother's house and she was having a yard sale and she's like, I'm getting rid of all these old tablecloths. And I was like, uh, can I have those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, yeah. So we uh, cut them up and made these. Went to Ikea and bought, what were these? It's a cable that we bought to uh, it's like a curtain and it had its own uh, rods hangers that went on it we got rid of those and just put the curtain on the rod itself so it actually pulls back pretty easy and um, gets out of the way and then we just clip it so it actually works really well really fast to close things up and give you some privacy and then in the morning I'm drinking coffee I can look out the front window and watch uh, traffic and then, when we so then get over to here, end. from Ikea, this comes from Ikea, so they have, um, after you bolt those two in, then you hook everything together, adjust your cable to the right length, cut it, and then it has this little diode thing here that you just spin, and it tightens mm. the cable up tight, um, and then that's, it's pretty tight, you can play a guitar on it, so, mm. <laughs> works pretty good. This is just another specified area for our son, other than his bed, we wanted him to have his own area. He loves to play video games. But this chair was the original driver chair. So once he bought his air ride chair, we had a spare chair. And so uh, he built a box underneath it, put a seatbelt on it. Um, and then my son puts his Xbox under there. And he can play video games. He has his TV mounted. And he has a box here with all of his um, you know, games and everything in his box. Good storage unit for him. And it serves as a secondary chair for people who travel with us. It's belted, seat belted and everything. So put the seat belt on that chair so we would have another space for another rider that could use a seat belt. Just, I guess some people have issues with it being secured. That was a, a double piece of plywood that was mounted onto the rail that the original chairs were mounted to. So it's bolted along the rail to the original rail. You come out here and then it's, I put a board around on the floor bolted that to the floor and then nailed everything to that perimeter that was on the floor. So it's not going anywhere <laughs> if there was an accident. So um, it is built on a wooden box, but I built it in a way that it wouldn't, unless it pulls one inch washers through two layers of uh, three quarter inch plywood, it's not going anywhere. And then the back of it is for his shoes because he doesn't have a shoe drawer like you'll see in the back. He, his shoes go back here. And his Xbox plugs into this plug, and this plug is not one of the ones that runs off the DC. It is one of the ones that does have to be, it's shore power only, so it does have to wait till we park to play that. <laughs> but he does have a good view out the window because 
Um, and then we put him back here at the emergency window. So if he's ever traveling. Well, that was another, down. that's um, talking about the emergency window. That's one of the cool things that I realized about 10% into the build. You can move them and put them where you want them. When you're building this thing, if you're leaving your windows and you don't like where the emergency hatch is, take it out and put it in a location, you know, where you want it. So I had already built over, there was one and a half windows that got lost in the build. That was against the rules, um, but it got lost to the shower. And one of our emergency windows is behind that shower. I wish I'd have taken it out because we'd have got another emergency window moved to a location where it would have been usable still. Um, but I'd already built over it when I realized, hey, you can pull those out and put them wherever you want. Um, but the rest of them got moved to a location. One's by his seat there, one's by this seat here, and the other one is in the back um, over the chair. So it's pretty cool. We were able to just rearrange them in a way that they'd still be functional. Yeah. I did not want another wall here. Another wall, I gave up. This wall was one thing I had to have because of the bathroom, but I did not want a wall here. So. Um, he kept saying we need a space that we can close off. We need like a master, um, something separate from our son. So he came up with an idea to create a wall if in the moment you need one. Um, he has this cool invention. Yes, yeah, so we had hashed out a couple different ways of having a wall where it, originally it was going to be this door swung around all the way over here and closed to a... All I wanted was a one foot wall here and she wouldn't let me even put that in. So there's no walls. No. So I'm like, well... And then I was going to put a flip-up wall, and my brother talked me out of that. He said that it was going to be horrible because every time she sat something on it, someone would want to flip the wall up, and there would be stuff sitting here. So he said, why don't you put it at the end, which was a great idea, other than it was really complicated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it runs on, I took an eight-foot ladder, step ladder, and chopped it all up and made these cool runners that I mounted to the wall. So it's the back legs of an eight foot aluminum ladder, which is just basically aluminum channel. So there's a piece of aluminum channel that goes down both sides. And then um, I cut slots into an old door. So this is a just a regular in interior door that I just cut down and um, made into this shape. So it runs on this rail, slides up. It's not the the smoothest transition, but it does go up real nice. It cut to fit all of that craziness over there. And as long as everything is lined up right, take the pin out of the top and put the pin on the side and it latches it here so it all cut to fit. Then I had to have a stopper that you couldn't see through. And then when the door's open, there's a crack here. So that's actually filled with a, a vinyl like an upholstery vinyl that I stuck in the door there to show you that and then this door just door knob is a dummy door knob it just clicks over here and it clicks over there and if you actually want to lock it we have the slide locks that lock it into the ceiling here or into the wall if you're in the bathroom so this is the bathroom door that duels as the bedroom door and this door and it just closes here and it completely shuts and gives you your privacy basically from this back the bus. Right, so and then um, you can open it up and then just have this wall down, which it's down the majority of the time. But um, if you wanted to go back and have a uh, your uh, actual bedroom back here where you know he's up there playing the games or doing whatever he's doing. Yeah, well, it's just nice if you need to change your clothes or yeah. or anything that you know may come about. We have company that comes and stays, like our my grandmother, my mom and dad. If somebody wants to come stay with us, it'd be nice to be able to you know, give them their own option too. So not just for us, but looking forward to like other people that want to come travel with us and cousins and whatnot. They can actually close this off. They have a space and you know, we can sleep outside on the deck or up front. So this was nice. an, ad an addition out of necessity that yes. still has, we're arguing about what color we're going to paint it. So that's why it's still natural. It might stay that way. We're leaving it. <laughs> so it was built because we needed extra storage for like towels and things like that. And just extra bathroom stuff. Um, that didn't fit in the bathroom. We're All I needed was a bar of soap, toothbrush, <laughs> toothpaste. But there's apparently yeah. other things that you need. We're big have... fans of don't buy it until you've used all the other one. Like I don't like six soap containers or six lotion containers or 
don't buy the next one until you've used that one. But we like certain products from certain stores and they are not available across the U.S. So when we go to those certain stores, so we do stockpile. So there's four or five of them. <laughs> we'll, we'll plug there for some of our products. But um, we, so he built this so we could put it here instead of it being in the back. If you needed an extra bar soap or toothpaste. It was originally in the tub the at the back and it was just... Yeah. We don't, these beds flip up, but we don't actually usually flip them up because, you know, you're living in here and that's, you know, it, it works great like it yeah. is. So ended up being the perfect place to put some more stuff. Yeah, and, and the open shelving, like the chicken wire behind it and everything was designed because I did not want another wall. Um, this still gives you that open feeling. And a lot of people put like uppers in an RV where they're rounded on the back. They have the door on the front. We had those in the camper trailer. She said no uppers. I did. So there was no uppers going No uppers allowed in the bus. I just didn't want that because, again, it, that, that door is going to close the wall off. And when you're standing behind it, it's going to limit your view. When you're standing in front, it's going to limit your view. And I just wanted it to be. The 360 windows was something I wanted to make sure we got to take advantage of all the time. So having this. The uppers kind of, can kind of make things close in. Yeah. And it is amazing how much stuff we squeezed in here. And it's all low. Yeah. And because your arms can swing, I guess, or you feel more open from the waist up, it actually made the space feel pretty big. Yeah, because in our travel trailer, when you look down the wall, as in most of them are, you have walls on both sides. When you're looking down the hallway, you're going to see walls. And I think it limits your view. I think it limits your personalization. And so for me, I just did not want another wall. I wanted something different that I hadn't yeah. seen before. And this is what we came up with. It worked out pretty cool. Yeah. And having three in a bus, it does kind of, you know... <laughs> Tell them, the space tell them about your um, so, the dresser here. This was the dresser. I kind of came up with these. We were looking for something to put in here, and we had been shopping for used dressers, used chest of drawers, Maybe or whatever. a piece whatever. of cool furniture yeah. that I was going to put runners in and make it so it would stay closed. Like a statement piece. We were looking for something that we yeah. both loved that was functional. And But the problem with just furniture in general is when you travel, keep in mind, everything moves. So if you buy residential furniture, the drawers can fall out, things can happen. It was so going to need some kind of latches or straps. Everything was going to be strapped down, plus yeah. mounting the cabinet to the wall. Yeah. Plus it was going to be, you know, I don't know why most dresser drawers seem like they only hold four shirts and it's full. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, they don't fully extend. This. So I just was like, you know, if it has to stay, considering all the components, if it has to lock, if it has to have room, if it has to be accessible, what about file cabinets? And at that moment we were all like, File That's cabinets, yeah. So we went and um, shopped file cabinets. These are all file cabinets, and they pull out the distance. Like, you can really get to the back of your drawer. Um, it fully extends, and these latch. So when we're driving down the road, they don't, nothing's coming out of these guys. So we have three sets. Everybody has their own. And then we left one in the middle for, like, a laundry basket for dirty clothes. We needed a topper to keep, to kind of mount them all together because they're sets of two. So this was another door from the ReStore. <laughs> it was just a hollow door that he mounted to it. It gives us a surface so you know, we keep our iron up here. We can iron on this. We can fold laundry on it. You know, put p extra paper products or whatever we, you know, have that we need. When people come to visit, they tend to put um, their luggage here. This is like their extra space, you know, because you got to think that far in advance when people come to visit they're gonna bring stuff too um, yeah. yeah and then we have another strip outlet that runs on the DC back here so we can plug our iron into this outlet and I'm going down the road if you need to <laughs> um, but that's how that was it just came about it takes up some of the room over the engine over the tires sorry not the engine the tires um, it kind of built that over that he built it up on a box to get it high enough to it you know make it accessible for us so. and then there's another one over here as well because I have more stuff. I bought a fourth one to go over there, but trying to squeeze the mechanism for the door to open and close this room off and still get our, our seat here, the fourth one wouldn't fit. So it got yeah. tucked in the hole over here and actually worked out really good. Yeah, it, it was a really nice, good. was one of them accidents that happened in a good way, you know, yeah. so it was nice. So That's I have cool. my own space and this is nothing like we laid it out to be when mm -hmm. we were at the beach and we drew the layout. By the time we got home, put our hands on the bus the whole floor plan changed if not two or three times during the build out yeah. it definitely changed once we laid our eyes on originally <laughs> we were like we're gonna have a a toilet and a shower in here and keep them really narrow yeah. and then we're gonna do open sink in the bedroom back here where someone's in the bathroom either using the bathroom or the shower someone can still get ready brush your teeth comb their hair all that so that was great it was going right here well, that was his idea 
<laughs> well, I was all I was trying to keep everything to one side, and when you put the third item in the bathroom, the bathroom gets fatter, wider across the room. So um, the bathroom now has a little jog in the wall. It's angled because of that, because the sink and the toilet sit beside each other. But um, we ended up not putting anything where it jets out. Is just Cameron's seat that he plays games in. So it actually is very narrow, very unobstructing of the walkway through there. So it made the hallway feel big. Yeah, so um, when you come down the hallway, it does kind of go, it branches out and it gives you that room where you're not like following this narrow path all the way around. Yes, it made, uh, a bigger it, not feel, so. made it not feel crowded. But shiplap um, was one of the things that was on the list of when he said, <laughs> name the things you wanted. The farmhouse sink was one, and the shiplap was another, and a couple other things that. I'll point out, but that was one of the things I said I had to have, and he incorporated that in the build out as well. When the sink was supposed to go here, I was up there in the bathroom trying to save her windows <laughs> in the bathroom. And when I built, laid out the shower, and then I went to put in the toilet, um, the toilet was landing, splitting a window. So the wall that was going behind the window was splitting one of the windows down the center, which is going to make it not necessarily block any view, but it's going to make it so that window wouldn't open. So it was either like shrink the bathroom another foot and make it a really small space so where you sit on the toilet, your feet were in the shower, yeah. or it was go another two and a half feet, a whole window and a half the other direction into the kitchen. Well, it messed up a lot of other designs up that way, but we ended up going with a really big bathroom that we love. Yeah. Moved the seats across because the seats were going to be too deep on the one side. And, um, Anyway, it changed a lot of designs up yeah. there. It all got rearranged several times. Yeah, really nice. but being in an RV, the bathroom we knew was one thing that had to be a certain way. It had to be roomy. The shower was non-negotiable. Had to have room. We're both six foot. He's over, and it's just we're both big people. And those little RV tubs, easy. We we just <laughs> couldn't use the um, RV stuff um, because it was just not working for us. It just felt so closed in, and and it didn't work. So we knew we needed a bigger bathroom. We live in it full time, so we kind of kept that in mind yeah. all along. Was can you live with it every day? Do you love this? This is how it's going to be. I mean, you can always rearrange, but keeping those things in mind is like, what do you love about your home if you have one? Or what don't you like about your travel trailer if you have one of those? And make sure you incorporate that in your build. <laughs> <laughs> the bed, though, was something that we, this was kind of another thing I had to have. I wanted the beds to fold up. We wanted extra room. Everything in the bus has to do two things. So um, following with that, these beds are just like Cameron's bed up front. They both fold into themselves. but both being six foot, we wanted a king size bed. For being in construction, he didn't want to put the mattresses up against the windows or anything because of humidity. So he built these frames to allow them to fold up into them, kind of his own Murphy bed concept. Um, we couldn't buy a kit because a lot of the Murphy beds go straight up and down and I wouldn't forget my windows. So he had a really tall hurdle to, he only covered half of them, which was still a big discussion. I didn't want it covered at all, but to get the mattresses to fold up into it, um, it they had to go. He built shelves in all of these so that we all have our own, you know, bookshelving. It just extra stuff that you have your personal stuff, you know, to have a place to put all that, um, but still be able to close it up when we want to close it and have people in. You can also do it like a day bed. One goes up and, um, you know, you can use it as a couch if you want. Um, it's also the access to the back, like storage area back there. So. Most of the time I just run across the bed. <laughs> Um, and then he built these um, seats in the back. These are extra seats for us um, to serve as additional passenger seating. Um, but they are um, shoe boxes. They lift up and you can put your shoes in the bottom. We each have one um, for extra stuff. Everything he wanted, everything to have a home so that it wasn't falling when we were moving. You have to pack it away and move it two or three times if they we had to move it. To, to store where you kept it. You know what I mean, I don't want to put it in a different place after you know, now we're moving down the road, so we're going to put all of our stuff in a different place. So yeah. it's like, put it where it can go and stay all the time. Yeah, the rule was if you had bit. to move it more than once, we're, build, we're building something for it. Yeah, um, and that's or kind of how get rid it, of it. Or get rid of it. And that's kind of <laughs> how it went. Yeah, and, and everything is kind of that way. You buy a shirt, you, you donate a shirt, or, you know, because you don't have it so much, you know, room for stuff. So. You mentioned the construction. One of the things, I lived in a bus when I was a kid, and I just remembered you know, my blankets were against the windows and depending on how you're heating and cooling, the windows can condensate like crazy and anybody that's been in one can attest to that. So I was like, nothing, you can have some wood touch the windows, probably wouldn't, you're not going to rot them because it's not that much water, but you don't want to be 
curling up in your blankets at night and all of a sudden you got a big soggy spot on your blanket. So yeah. none of the bedding I knew, I knew that none of the bedding could touch any of the windows or walls. Depending on how you insulate, that probably changes significantly. Yeah. I left all of the panels in this bus and didn't take any of them out and built everything on the inside. Like I said, built the electrical in the boxes above and conduit down and I didn't do any extra insulation. So technically it's not insulated well, it's just what it was when it was manufactured. Except the windows, you did go back through and reseal every window. I pulled all the windows out and put a, it's called a backer rod, like a half inch backer rod. I stuffed a half inch backer rod 360 degrees around all the windows. Every window. Because the windows were just straight drafty. AC units work on a fan suction concept. So the efficiency of these is basically really dependent on, even though insulation matters, AC units really depend on how well you sealed just drafty cracks. So if you have a lot of cracks, it pulls from the easiest place it can get air from. And if you have cracks everywhere, it's literally when it turns on, it pulls hot air into the room right in and makes it run inefficiently. So the more cracks you can seal, the more efficient your, your rig is going to be for sure. So I sealed all of those windows and we put any kind of sealer we could around the doors and made a huge change in how these things run. They really work good, even though I uh, cheated and didn't insulate. Yeah, <laughs> but it's fine. And so we ended up with the vinyl. Well, then the vinyl, because of the heating and air, I guess the, the temperature differences, it started to shrink. Well, we had put the furniture on top of it, which is a no no. We did it anyways. And then so now that it's shrinking, it's starting to pull apart, and so now we're facing either replacing it with, I mean, it's the top end of whatever they have at Lowe's. It's the highest in vinyl that they have, and the guy gave us a great deal on it because we were sick after the first purchase, but so now we're facing having to redo this, but we'll leave it till it. So, um, so this is what the beds look like without the bedding on them before we fold them up, and it's, it's really easy. You just grab your side, and it folds right up, and these are both uh, six-inch memory foam mattresses. Um, the gap in the middle, we don't really feel it because he fitted them, he fit them perfectly together when he was doing the build. They were meant to touch exactly like they're supposed to, not have a gap in the middle, but still give us a king size bed, which opens up all this space here. And they also latch in place so that they don't fall down while you're driving down the road as well. This is a modified deadbolt, which is uh, questionable at best. <laughs> so I took the back side off of a regular deadbolt, threw it away drilled the hole and had to cut a little steel pin to make one of the little, has a little bar in there that makes it operate the bolt. So I had to add that little bar, but it's just a modification. It's only one sided. The other side is not on the deadbolt. I took it off and threw it away. Because yeah, it's flat where the mattress sits on it. It's kind of a toy hauler concept. We wanted to be able to put chairs back here, have people back here, just more expanded space where people are in. You can basically, I'm leaning on it. You're leaning on it, it's like a coffee bar type situation. You can eat up here. I almost so. put my desk back here. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> got thrown around a lot. sit in my high chair and look out the window when it got to where, where are you gonna put the chair? You yeah. already have chairs up there. Yeah. And you gotta cut some, if, somewhere. If it doesn't work twice, it, you can't have it. <laughs> so, right. but then, and then he installed the pallets on the back. We just, old pallets again, reusing something and um, whitewashed them and they serve as the headboard when the beds are down to keep the pillows from falling off. And then they also serve as, um, they hold our cleaning products in the back because they have shelves naturally in them. So it holds like our broom and, and things back there to keep it out of the kitchen or keep it from falling. Again, everything falls as soon as you go to move. Yeah. It all sh shifts. So. I was gonna show just, this is just two by four framing. That's a three quarter piece of plywood. This is two by six material and it swivels on a, I believe that's a one and an eighth or one and a quarter conduit pipe that's just mounted through the plywood ends. It's all bolted to the wall with L brackets and um, so none of it's going anywhere. It's all rock solid like built-ins. Hardware wise it's probably around a hundred dollars and wood wise it was probably around two hundred dollars. So they were a little bit pricey for what they look like in my opinion but um, for what they did for us it was worth it and if you go to start buying Murphy bed parts they're really really high end yeah. and they're kind of cheap to be honest with you they're kind of flimsy and spring loaded and, and they're size spe specific too and none of them fit like they like I said most of them go up some you of them come down to do the, the long yeah. bed the 
tall way to go up, which would have covered the window. Which would not have worked for me. No. This one here, it pivots on that bar, which is only half the bed. So technically, the weight of the bed, you really don't feel it. It's almost like it's weight dis distributed evenly, so it's pretty light to lift. Yeah, anybody can lift them. I mean, I did it with one hand, and pulling them down is the same way, so they're very... And these, these are regular are residential door hinges, even though when it sits on the floor, the weight is against the hinge. I was going to just do two and opted for four just because I didn't want to have something start to sag or give or start to move. Once it starts moving once, it's over. Yeah. It's going to start to break. Yeah, so when that we... That was in our old camper. <laughs> when we lived in the RV, you know, we were talking about how we tried to make it something. He bought this bendable flex rod to make the master bed bath basically like we've done here he did that in our travel trailer with this bending rod so he was able to come around we couldn't fit in the bathroom yeah comfortably to get dressed yeah. so we would open the door up and this curtain went around in a circle yeah so we just kept it we so already had the curtain the we already bigger. had yeah we already had the curtain we already had the track so we were looking for a solution to put back here so we just was like hey we already have this track rod we took it out of the trailer when we sold it um, so he mounted it up here, and these are just little S hooks, um, and the curtain slides really nicely, you know, back there. So it's kind of like a, a reuse of what we already had. The bus door, uh, a lot of people ask about how do you lock it, how do you things like that. Um, I didn't want a big latch or anything. I didn't want to be locked from the outside and not be able to get out. That was my main concern. And I know we looked at a lot of other options with dead bolts and whatnot, but he came up with this solution. That's a, um, just a U-bolt. And I just got some rubber tubing and I lined the U-bolt on it so it wouldn't rattle if it was just hanging there. And I used double nuts to lock it in place. It's tightened all the way down. It just slips over the... It slides um, over the red part and it holds it. Over the red part so okay. it can't be lifted. So you can't from open the it from in. the outside. But if, whatever, emergency, something was to happen, you literally just slip it up and then you can open the door. Yeah. So. And then I didn't want to paint the door. I left the vintage door because I thought it was cool. We, we did the front to, one too. We left it. Yeah, we left all of our stickers, all of our decals. <laughs> we left them on uh, anything we could. We let you know. We leave it. So then to open it, it just goes out like this, and then you get a nice, you know, it holds, it latches back there, and you get a nice cross breeze. Um, the reason that we didn't put the bed all the way back was because we wanted the. We have a washer dryer hookup back here, and then we have the DC for the fridge or the freezer. So we wanted to make sure. Right now, it just has like, um, you know extra stuff in tubs. We just wanted to make sure that, that was at the back of the bus, something we were walking past every day. So, and it gives us room. We can sit right here, we can sit on the end, and it creates a nice breeze back here. She mentioned the shelves that are in here. All I did was just cut the pallet side off. We mounted it up here and made it so it would give us a nice opening. They're mounted to the floor and to the beds. Um, and then I just added one board in the back along the bottom so anything you put in there can be stuck on the shelves. And um, so everything's back here. And this is a table, like a portable table. Yeah. It stores on this side. And it's got some cleaning stuff on that side. Yeah, you can store anything in it. It's good for just holding. That's the most important thing in the bus is everything's going to move. Make sure it's latched. All these little containers on top of the bed are latched. This is something that I actually love, but she hasn't got any on her side because she's protesting them. But these are just little cases that I found. <laughs> There's one screw in the bottom that mounts each one of these. So they turn to kind of look natural, but they're mounted. So I got a lot of different things, belts in there, socks in that one, but they're mounted to the top of this thing here. These two are glued together, but they function, they sit there all the time. And the guitars are bungee down, the ukulele's bungee down. This is a magnet, it does not move. It stays there. Why that plant. thing rides there all the time, I'll never yeah. know. It's never moved, so that's a... <laughs> little plant rides at the corner. Yeah, that's a real plant. Um, but then, like, more stuff like the hangers for the hats, because, again, it takes up more drawer space. The more stuff you have, if all that was to go in a drawer, you've lost stuff for clothes. And when you travel full-time, you need clothes for pretty much every season. So, um, you know, having the hats up here, kind of out of the drawer, out of the way, you know, it kind of just adds more organization to, you know, what is... A tight space to do that in. So there's no roof space in this bus. It's about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters is all the depth that you have between the two layers. So when you go to put the AC unit in, there's no room for your wiring or any of the, or the controller that goes in here, all that stuff. So I actually went outside and built a box around the hole that I cut and then trimmed it out with some flashing and sealed it in 
and then set the unit on top, which the unit, when it's set on top, actually is now on a flat surface because the, the box that I built, I cut it to the curve of the roof. So it's ended up sealing really nice. And then you mount that just like normal to screw everything through. Still have the curve inside here that I couldn't eliminate really. I could have, but it would have just took some modification. But technically all that air just blows into the room and this is the return which is sealed to the plate that's on the inside. So it worked out pretty good. And then to access the roof deck, or roof deck on top, the, you do it. <laughs> my inspiration for building a bus was because I was going to have a, a deck on the roof and nobody else has a deck on their RV. Well, not nobody. Yeah, I'm sure some limited. a lot of people do. But We did not have one on our travel trailer. I, yes, so I didn't have one and I wanted one. So This was the one thing he was like, he, made, he let me make a list and then he was like, this is my non-negotiable. It's my so, list, yep. Yeah. So where to put the ladder was is always a thing because you want to hang one, it's removable, mount one up the back, it all looked too standard. So I was... Uh, well, for safety reasons, security reasons, you yeah, didn't want to put one out. Yeah, these things don't latch normally. You'd have to really modify dual latches for both sides because it's made to pop up from either side and someone can just pull the latch to rescue you in a car accident. Yes. So they're made to pop from the outside. So I'm like, I'm not going to... Put a bus to the ground, or rather, put a ladder to the ground outside for someone to just climb up in here. So, anyway, put it on the top. Here. We kept all of our emergency hatches as well. These are the originals. We thankfully they did not leak, and we did not have to uh, replace them, and we did not paint them either because we like the original kind yeah. of dingy color. <laughs> they really are. They were. Yeah, if they well. were to start to leak, I guess we'd have to shop to find some new ones. Yeah. But these were. Because we've talked about doing like um, skylighting in them if they were, but and if they're working. We're going to just leave them as is. So these, uh, you have to have clearance above you because this is a full ladder. Yes. But, um, and a little bit tall because it's kind of, we have an AC unit for the, the drivable AC that mounts on the top. So the deck is a little bit taller yeah. above. But this ladder just pulls in. Here. And sets the floor. <laughs> so one of the cool features about this, this is an extension ladder. Ladders that have two pieces that normally would extend to taller. And I took the back half and cut it into like two feet and then left it on the back of the ladder. So the last two feet is mounted to the top of the deck through a bar that just swivels. This ladder up here, I just put bolts through it where the two ladders connected. I just put a bolt through here and the other ladder just stops it. So you pull this down, the weight of the ladder, you could literally climb it without it touching the floor. So it's not going to slip out from underneath you, yeah, and the weight doesn't go on our flooring in here. And then I put a little wood block in the bottom just to keep it from scarring up the floor. Yeah. And we can also drop it down on the bed. We don't even have to fold the bed up. So yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. And then that goes up to the oasis on the top. <laughs> Footage okay. heading up. I think so. The deck was a really cool concept that I could not live without. This was a rack off of an old trailer my dad had where he used to do vinyl siding. So we cut it down to fit and um, put it up here. So we made the rails on it because she tried to tell me she didn't want rails at first, but you get up here without them and anybody's walking around, it kind of gets a little squirrely. Uh, you can feel everything rocking. So it's like. I get more people to go up and visit the deck if I put rails up. So they just fold up. They have a removable bar that we Velcro over here to the side. And then you can see here, we just hinged them to the floor, those four by fours. And this just folds down to the floor. That folds down to the floor. And the reason it's so short is because there's a ladder in the middle that has to lay here. So. Originally they were taller, tried to fold it all up, and my ladder was in the way, so we had to cut them down until they fit where all three of them lay flat on the deck when we're driving. So, um, But the rails do help and make it feel uh, fairly safe when you're up here. We have an extra hatch here at the front that I have a small rope ladder I can throw up here and climb up from the kitchen if you want to sneak up without going up the back. <laughs> so when we mounted this deck up here 
on the roof, we had to make sure that it landed on the actual trusses of the original bus body, the build. So we lined the post up on those and then bolted it through the uh, roof, all the way through the roof, so it would um, be secure, you know, if it was to, to roll or we were to get into some kind of accident and want it to come flying off or start to come loose at any point and to be safe when we were up here. So it's bolted all the way through the roof and into the inside. If you look inside, you can actually see the bolts are still on the ceiling. They don't really stand out that much. And then we use the RV roof sealant. We use the die core to actually the steel brackets to the roof where the bolts go through. So we sealed the bolts themselves and all the way around the brackets and haven't had any leaks out of that at all. So it's been good. Um, the decking on here, it's a self-tapping wood screw is what it is. So they go through the metal and then they actually sink into the wood. I pre-stained this whole thing because from the underneath you can see the deck. So it's going to be a little tough to do the second bit of stain on here, but I stained the whole thing. Every individual board was stained 360 before it was installed. So I cut them all, laid them all out on the ground, stained them all all the way around and then put them down so it would look good from underneath as well because you can see up under this deck from the ground again these are don't buy the steel this is conduit it's a whole lot cheaper than most i used it in a couple different places in here the conduit was cool and it's just drilled through the ends and these are recycled volleyball net poles Yeah, once, once I pull it back to here, I'm able to grab it and then just pull it down into the room and slide it that way and close the hatch. And when I'm traveling, I pull it back here to right there and then I bungee cord it right there and this keeps it from, from lifting. Yeah, you can throw it back up. So the TV, a lot of people ask, do you have a TV mounted? Because we don't have one in the front. We did mount it, we never use it. But it also, it has a pin in the back to keep it from flying out while we're driving down the road. Everything secured again. And then I like to defuse the oils to kind of keep everybody calm and just add moisture back in the air, especially here in um, the hotter temperatures, it kind of dries out. So. I had this diffuser and it kept falling off the counter and spilling water everywhere. So I asked him to build me something to put my diffuser in. So it's just a little penny and this whole wall comes off and then the diffuser is inside and it just comes out the little side and it goes right back in. So when it's diffusing it looks like smoke coming out of the chimney of the little house. Um, and that's just a way that we can use it but still not have to worry. You know when you pull off you're like oh no did we take the diffuser down or anything like that. So. That just goes in like that, and then, and in the front there's routed out holes for the power, and then the back mm -hmm. is routed out as well. So it's just that was important for us to have, and I didn't want to keep making a mess with it, so he solved the problem. All the curtains in the back half of the bus, um, unlike the front, the front's all sewed in patches. These are all ragtie curtains that me and my son Cameron made. More fabric from the thrift store. We just bought and washed it several times, and then just cut them into sections and tied them and we tied every single strain of these by hand throughout the whole back half of the bus and then whenever you want to pull them back you just grab a bunch I usually divide the windows in half because it kind of works that way you just grab a piece and it kind of goes around and you just latch it and it holds and um, that's our curtain for right here uh, we just didn't want full curtains like the front because we kind of wanted the privacy still something a little different in the back different than the front we didn't want to get into more sewing because that was a lot so we just no uh, that was a lot it was a lot. We, we tied. Cut and tied and cut and tied for, for days. Like two weeks. I built half a yeah. bus while they were doing it. He that. really did. Our focus was <laughs> to tie these. And then, of course, you would tie them thinking, you know, this is how far we need to go. And then by the time we would tie the material, it would shorten or lengthen. So we were in here modifying that. And then these longer windows where, you know, the cabinets aren't had to be adjusted. So there was no set pattern of how many inches to tie these curtains. So it was constantly changing, but it was fun. And I love it. It's probably one of my favorite things in the back half of the bus. It's just part of us, I guess. <laughs> Going forward though, through the hallway, you um, go to the bathroom, and the bathroom was actually built a little bit over the wheel well too. 
um, so it kind of gave us a little bit bigger space. The door that latches is just really great because you can make it, everybody can kind of fit in. This is something that would never happen in our RV bathroom. There's both two adults in one bathroom. That would never happen in our RV. So he went with the um, towel shower. I wanted subway towel. That was the last thing on my list was the subway towel um, shower. So he did all that. Um, and he built me a seat in there because girls need a seat. You need to shave and all that stuff. So he built that over the wheel well. So we actually were able to incorporate that of more dead space basically. Um, he was able to use it for some of the functioning. And then in the bottom of the shower, um, when we lived at the beach, we collected a bunch of sea glass. And we didn't know what we were collecting it for at the time. Once we started the build out, we were like, we have to incorporate this. Um, it went from like the countertops to different things. It was things. everywhere. Yeah. Bathroom sink. Yeah. Uh, Countertops, kitchen. It ended up as here. the flooring in the shower. And I love it because every day when I get in there, it makes me think of when we lived at the beach and just other adventures. It's something that we were able to take with us. So um, that's probably my favorite thing in the bathroom. He built the wall up to make sure that the water stays in. It's ample enough room. LED lights that he ran. The same strip that's throughout the rest of the bus is also in the shower because it gets a little dark in there. So he ran the strip in there and covered it with silicone so not to be waterproofed. My favorite is my restore suitcase that I cut in half. <laughs> yeah we needed extra storage for like wash rags and q-tips and things like that so he just... Oh, just uh, just found a case I cut it in half with a table saw mounted a piece of wood in the back and then screwed it to the wall. Yeah, one thing we did do we went with the residential toilet um, for us right now which is we can actually swap it out if we ever decide to do boondocking or off-grid um, has the flexibility of going to an RV toilet or a composting toilet um, which is an easy swap out but for us we knew at the time we were going to be parked and traveling and parking in places with um, full hookup so we went with the larger toilet just because it's nice to have you know no other no other reason other than the convenience of having the larger toilet it does you know the holding tank will hold it but you only get around four to five flushes maybe a little bit more of a 20 gallon black tank so <laughs> If don't you, get many uh, flushes. Yeah, if you get carried away, yeah. it's going yeah. to get full in a hurry. So. Yeah, so definitely not something to do for wooden ducking, but we knew that going in. That was part of our plan going in. That was something we were not going to be doing right away, but we can't swap it out when we get to that. This is another sink from Ikea. It's a bathroom sink. <laughs> it's the same sink as the one in front, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, so. it's basically cut in half. Um, but um, this one worked. We had to have it as shallow as possible because uh, you only have so much room. Um, this was also a cabinet built with the pallet and the epoxy on the top of it as well. All of the drawers are pallet wood and then these are just regular plain knobs that I mod podged part of our fabric from our curtains is just mod podged to the front of them just to kind of tie them in with the curtains as well. And then the lighting has that has its own fixture. Let's turn it on and off on that one. And then there's a fixture on this one that runs the one in the shower. And then the we didn't want a big mirror. We have the full length on the side. We didn't want a big mirror. Just wanted something small. Um, I don't know, just didn't want too much, too many things. So the, the flexible mirror was something that we went with so you can pull it near you, you can uh, turn it around, it's magnifying. So you don't have to have that stuff extra taking up space in your drawer. And then you have the hand rack, and then he built toothbrush racks for us to put our toothbrush. I mean, everything has to have a home or it's going to be everywhere. It's going to fall when you first you move it. Yeah, you gotta put it somewhere. Yeah, and then he built a box where all the essential oils um, that I use in the diffuser, they're all up there because if not, they'd be in a drawer somewhere else. But all of the drawers open here, but they're not as deep as you think they would be. But behind that is all of his plumbing. So he put these tracks on it to pull them out, and you can actually get to your plumbing if you need so to. So the only reason why they come out so far is because that's the shortest drawer runners I could find. <laughs> so otherwise, it would have just been pulled out this far. But um, the reason why the drawer is so short is because all the plumbing in the back, like she said, is built behind it. So. Yeah. That's the plumbing for the kitchen sink and for this sink all meets in the middle and goes behind we all used of the drawers. All of the self-closing um, runners so we wouldn't have to put anything to hold the drawers closed. So they stay closed while we're driving. Yeah, because again all that would be in the floor as well. A little well. bit a little bit more expensive, but it just made it so much easier for I mean for the length that we own the bus, those are gonna stay closed and not have to latch every time you try to move. Yes, so. you don't want to have to forget. You do forget, forget one thing and then everything is in the floor. You've made a mess. You won't forget it twice. <laughs> and then for our bathroom fan, this is actually, we had a local camera shop that, or computer shop, that had these fans, I guess for a computer. Yeah, so this is a fan out of an old computer, <laughs> piece of PVC pipe, and one of the old speaker covers from the bus speakers in the intercom system. 
and then that button right there says camera on, which is a little creepy when you're in the shower, but you do turn the camera on to turn on the fan. That was a button I stole off of the, the bus had cameras in it before, so I stole the button and put it back here. I just want to show, I guess I'll show you real quick what this um, does inside here, where, how I built that fan. I, the big fans with the, the button and the crank and all that, and you're cutting a hole in the top of the bus. This was a single hole through the side, and those are Velcroed down as well. But that's a piece of PVC pipe and the computer fan that I just glued to that and screwed to it, the little button. It's a 12 volt. Uh, computer fans are 12 volt, or make sure you find a 12 volt computer fan. But, um, and then it's just a hole that goes out the side of the bus. We can show you that outside. It doesn't leak. I put a little dab of uh, liquid nail in the bottom just so if water ran in, it wouldn't run all the way in. It stops at the little dam in there and keeps it from running in. The sides of this tub I did with, um, it's one by four PVC, so it's not painted. Um, I didn't want to have to paint next to the shower because if you paint next to the shower, it's not going to be painted very long. If you put wood here, it rot. And I wanted to have a rim, so if you shot water this direction, it actually stops here. It doesn't shoot out into the room. The base along the bottom of the shower, all of the grout underneath it is built up, so it runs back the other direction too. Yeah, everything goes here. So we haven't had more than my son just sticking the thing out. That's Shower yeah. and spray in the floor. We haven't had any water in the floor. Yeah. And then mounting the shower curtain, we get asked a lot, how do you, how do you mount your shower curtain? It's just a copper rod that he bored the hole out of, stuck it in there. And I cut it the exact length to where it's too long to come out. And I bent it just enough to get it in. I just kept trimming it a little shorter, a little shorter, until it fit. It actually moves back and forth, but it doesn't fall out. It's not going it's anywhere. just the right length so it fit in there. Yep. And so there's no obstruction or nothing to hold it and it doesn't fall. And then the, for the good. faucets, um, oh, for the faucets he used a, it's like a water saver head for the shower. Yeah. Um, just to get you. Anybody boondocking probably should figure out what that actually is, but it like uses no water and it has a lot of pressure. Yeah. It's a little bit pricey for as shower heads go. Just the shower head and the, the thing actually works really really well yeah it's not your standard none of the you can just put your finger over it and it'll quit spraying yeah. but it feels like it's dumping a ton of water on you but it's mm -hmm. not it's yeah. some kind of a whatever patented design yeah know. yeah none of these are rv spigots or, or you know faucets or anything yeah. all, all everything in here is stuff. everything's residential just because we had one break and then like the plastic Two tends to dry three. rot and the nozzle dry rotted and broke off and so we just went with real residential tile in so the door was something that I was not negotiable about either. I guess I've said that a lot of times. Um, oh, I was hard. I was. I had rules. Uh, so anyway, um, I wanted to keep the original door. I was a little upset. I really wanted it to open so it out. Still hit the air in there and open the door. Yeah, I wanted it, it worked, to. It was cool. I wanted it to open naturally, like a school bus door would. But um, for safety reasons and putting uh, different latches on it, we looked at so many different latches. I just couldn't agree on anything safety-wise. So he said, "I'll keep the door, but we're going to do it a certain way." So. Yeah, so before it had a, an air piston at the top that you hit it and the door would be like Psh, and it would just fire and it was awesome. You could eject people or let anybody on if you wanted, but it was impossible to um, lock from the outside when you were leaving. It had a thing up there, I guess, was to lock the air piston on it, um, but uh, it just wasn't functional. If you pull over to the gas station, you run in to grab something, you can pull out your keys and deadbolt the door. It wasn't practical. So I wanted the keypad and I wanted the door to swing and latch behind us. So it was cool. We just screwed the two panels together. They're bolted in the center. I took it off its hinge over here, bolted it there, filled in the space on this side and mounted a regular residential knob. Drilled a hole into the steel panel on this side and then it latches and um, and locks there and we can go we don't even carry any keys we just come in punch in the pin and unlock it um, it has this knob if you haven't seen one before has a switch inside when I flip it it makes it not work you know when we're going to gas station stuff that's how we leave it if we're here hanging out all day 
we'll unlock it on the inside and then you can walk up and it'll actually function without typing in the pin. Yeah, so that every time you don't have to type in a pin code every time. And it also has the availability for a deadbolt too, um, from the outside or the inside. Every day we keep it deadbolted at night, but when we leave, just for extra security, if we want to use a deadbolt, we have that option as well with that particular setup. I put one of those foam backer rods like around the windows inside of this, um, just because it was getting wind from the top and bottom. Yeah, you see it hanging out right there at the top, but it kept some of the draft down around that door. On the door, you might definitely oh. talk about like the vinyl wrap. You can see on the outside, uh, it's got the picture on it, but from the inside, you know, you can see out really well. But driving, another reason we kept the glasses is because when you drive, seeing out this window is so important. Um, you know, we had originally put the vinyl over that window. We first left, we got about five miles down the road and he was out here exacto knifing the vinyl off of the window because you just couldn't see. This curtain does pull back and we drive with just that exposed so you can see out of all of that. But the vinyl he applied to every single window and that's our design that we wanted it to blend and kind of go up all the way down, kind of look the same as it goes. So. Um, the guy that did the bubbles for me, I just point this out, he actually made this, he measured this so the size of these bubbles actually matched across here. And you can see it actually gets smaller down here. I was appreciative for him taking the time to do that. I was like, man, that's all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then Adam cut and applied every single one of these per window. It's not like one piece for both. It was one piece here and one piece there, and it went all the way down. You know, yeah, every single one of them. And they had this like adhesive that I put around the border. It's supposed to keep it from rolling up. I guess one of the downsides of this might be that the lifespan of the color is only about three years, and it's a little bit pricey. I probably could have bought a machine and did it myself for the, what they charged me, but I saved some by installing it myself and there's all different um, grades of this stuff that you can buy they have like a six year and a ten year if you're willing to spend the money you can get it on the paint we actually did a we wanted black and I knew this was gonna be a more active area around the bus you know where we're getting in and out of the bins maybe throwing your bikes up against it we actually did a bed liner at the bottom because I was gonna do a matte black anyway so we did a bed liner this is automotive paint without hardener in it. This also is automotive paint up here. We got a defective batch, which made it a really fun project on the white. They replaced it for me, but they didn't repair my bus after I painted it with their bubbly paint. But um, it's painted up about 10 inches above the curve with automotive paint without hardener on the white as well. And then the roof we did with a, a white cool seal that they say reflects the heat off of the um, the top. We did it without a hardener because the guy at the um, automotive place said I wasn't ready to paint it at the time and he said it had like a certain amount, it was a certain lifetime or a life like expectancy a life. in the shelf life. Yeah, thank you. Shelf life for the can and also I think because I was rolling it. I'm not a painter, know nothing about it, but I rolled this on in 100 degree heat and he said my timing I think would have been less on the drying and I can't imagine less than instant because that's what I had when I did it. Yeah, as soon as we painted it on here, it was drying faster than he could roll it. And then after you, if you came back over it, it was peeling off what you had already covered. Oh. So Cooler temperatures for painting this and the bed liner both applicable. Drive up north and then paint it. Do something Cooler temperatures. don't paint it in alabama um this is my only box that actually is storage and i just painted i slopped some paint in here just so this wouldn't be all yellow the back of the box is still yellow you can see some bus i wanted to keep there. some of the yellow in there you know um, and then it hooks up on the thing but these have just these latches we kept all the same hardware that was on them and then on the other side and at the back is where we built in all of our rv components i guess the tanks water heater we hid all of our plumbing in it unless it was actually extended out to an actual appliance this was actually on the bus when we bought it this was one of the things uh, two of the things he well, I guess, well, three, he wanted a specific height inside for us because we're taller. He wanted the deck, and then he wanted these bins already on the bus. He shopped for these already on it because comparing cost of a bus that already had them versus having somebody to uh, build them to specification plus, you know, weld mount them and everything, he wanted to just go ahead and get them on the bus. So they actually came on our bus, um, and then we kind of just used the space that we had to fill in what we needed them for. 
the grill, the grill is something that it kind of expands our kitchen. Uh, we didn't do propane in the kitchen, uh, didn't do a regular stove top. A lot of people ask about that. Um, the reason we didn't is because we had so many electric appliances already. I didn't want to be buying stuff I didn't need. I was trying to reuse what I already had. So when they go out, maybe we'll consider a different option. But this uh, hooks to our propane tank that we use for our tankless hot water heater. So Adam found this at I guess yard a yard sale. It was somebody's RV. They had sold their RV but forgot to put their RV camper or RV grill back into it. And so he just was selling it. So it came with the grill and the stand. And then Adam uh, added these to our bus, the, the holder. Stainless pipe. This was the original bus handle that you used to walk in to the bus, the little stair rail. So I cut it up. It's stainless. It won't rust. So I yes. built those brackets out of it to hang it on. Yep, and those stay on the bus while we're traveling and then to take this off you just lift the stove off and then he has a quick connect here that he just unhooks the hose to and this whole frame just lifts right off, the bolts stay on and then he the cut out a hole. This is an RV power port that I pulled the, um, the gas line through. So I just drilled a hole in the box and pop riveted that RV power port to the side of it so then it comes through there. And then, and here is a, a tank I bought on Craigslist. I uh, got a heck of a deal on. It's like a $500 tank. I gave 110 for it, I think it was. Yeah, and I a really big tank. took it down and had it certified. And they were like, hey, it's great. So it was really ugly when I bought it, kind of scary looking. So I sanded it down, painted it. It was really old. And um, put it in there. But it's a regular, it goes out. This steel line goes straight out there. I have an extra port in case I want to put something else on it. Then it goes straight across the bus. It's mounted to the frame. It goes to our hot water heater on the other side. The only thing this thing runs is the gas grill continuous hot water heater yeah, for we, the other side. That was another thing living in a travel trailer was we knew we did not want a regular tank because we would run out of hot water in about six minutes, 10 if you did a military shower. And with three of us showering, washing dishes, living full time in it, that was one thing was we knew we wanted a tankless hot water heater. The propane in this tank, the size of this tank, we can go, uh, I think we're filling up around 45 days now um, on that tank. Doesn't cost much to fill it up. But if we run this, this tends to use significant amount of gas when we're grilling, but the shower uses like little to none. I mean, we really could go a long ways on just the shower on the hot, tankless hot water heater. Endless hot water. <laughs> Another thing about the paint too was since we towed the Jeep, he wanted it to match basically the colors. The wheel wells are similar and he kind of went, we, you want to, when you're going down the road, you want to be as seamless as possible when you're coming into campgrounds. You don't want to be that sore thumb, so. Yeah, there was, you know, we wanted to do the, the bus. It could not be as pretty as some of the other RVs and I didn't want to get turned away from all of the RV parks. So we were like, let's make it look a little bit nicer if we can. So that was some of the reason why we did some of the stuff. That was the covering for the windows, like I said before, so we could throw stuff against it and not pay, make people look like, or say things yeah. like, uh, yeah. We took other people into consideration. Yeah, you can't see our bedding, you can't see our beds. It doesn't matter what we have to store in here, what we have to stuff in here. It's not an eyesore to anybody else. And I think when you're living a little different, <laughs> that was one thing we kept in mind, was we want to be different, but we don't want people to stare like, what is that, or it looks messy. We wanted to, you know, make school of people proud. So that's why we, that's why we were like, clean it up as best we can. And then towing, we knew we wanted to tow a vehicle because once you get to where you're going, um, we like to go out. We don't necessarily park right where we're, touring we want to like have the ability to drive up an hour drive back an hour do whatever we wanted to do so we wanted to tow this did not have any of this on it when we bought it it did have a hitch on it already of some sort someone had mounted one before we were kind of lucky with that because the wiring for trailer lights was back here so that was definitely i felt like i was cheating because all i did was just wire that up right under there i was like oh man i'm not gonna tell anybody well yeah, i just told everybody <laughs> and then we just bought this off of craigslist um i mean everything we tried to buy everything we could use i'm telling you if we could buy it used we shop for it and then the tow hitch you know he had to buy locally yeah. Yeah. most people told me they spent about 3500 dollars rigging up their rvs or bus whatever by putting a hitch the tow bar i can't remember what that's called but the bar that goes on the front of the jeep and the wiring in the jeep and um of course, I had to do all the work and YouTube how to do all the work, but um, I had about 800 in the whole thing, so that was 
huge savings for us for the time it took me to um, hit up YouTube yeah, 90 well, times. We've already like pre-used stuff, um, you know, use whatever we could use, find it, uh, you know, on sale. And then um, he just mounted that up there and used the screws or the washers, not what come in the kit. Yeah, we got, it's a 10,000 pound one also. Yeah, and that's only 4,500. So it was overrated, but I was like for 200, yes. Yeah. This is what it didn't have. This is the power cord that hooks it up, so maybe I'm a little cheap. But these two ends came from O'Reilly's, and that is a stretchy water hose. I took the four wires that, that you need to wire up a trailer with. They're normally a flat four wire, and I just cut them in half and laid, um, I laid them like this. And then we stretched this thing out straight, pulled the wire through it, and hooked it up. I think these sell for, I know they're over 100, 145, maybe 150. Yeah, this is our second one. I got $30 in it. Uh, and then it just plugs in here, plugs into the front it of the Jeep. Really good. Yeah, and it stays coiled, which keeps it out of the way of, you know, everything else. So the only, I mean, this thing was beast. That thing is the only problem we had was the original bolts that came with it. And then they gave, they come loose and you know, then we almost lost the whole thing. But after switching it out to washers, lock washers, it made a huge difference and it tows it great. Yeah, I know, love this guy. <laughs> Our first RV we bought was one that someone had stolen off of a lot and drove it off in the mountains and then the cops found it finally and then pulled it, brought it back. The tank, I knew nothing about RVs. I knew nothing. And when we, yeah, bring it home. Well. There's a half tank, or maybe even a full tank, of dried sewage in it. The thing it never worked. I didn't know how they were supposed to work, but it didn't work. Yeah. And that was probably, that was before YouTube. Yeah, it was. <laughs> well, before I knew to go there, one or the other. Yeah, we thought that the meter kept saying full, full, you know, or half full. And we were like, we just pulled the thing. So finally one day he's like, up there. It would like drain a little. Arm in. Hoses inside, I finally figured out. This thing was dried up inside, so worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And then we finally ended up dropping the tank. So this side is um, one of the reasons why I bought all these boxes was to put all my stuff in so I didn't have to um, build all the brackets because I'm not a welder. And I didn't want to learn because I'm partially lazy. Um, so in here, all the stuff I went shopping for on Amazon and on eBay and anywhere else I could find it had to fit in this box. So I had to get my dimensions and then order it, get my dimensions and order it, and then trust the listing that it was right. A few things had to be sent back because it wasn't accurate. But this is our fresh water tank. It's our heated hose. We store our other hose right on top of that. This little board right here is mounted from underneath. It just keeps that tank from vibrating out. But basically, it has water in it now. If you drain the tank, you can just disconnect the lines and just lift the tank right out of there. It's just sitting in there, supported by this, and then obviously by the door when it's, when it's closed. That is a 40 gallon tank, which will last you two days, three days, depending on how you use it, of course. This side here, this is the Gerard tankless hot water heater. It fits in just like a normal RV. This is an RV hot water heater. And uh, we put that in here. I bought the cover for it originally and was gonna put the whole thing on the front of the door, but you can see the door mechanisms um, we're all here, so I ended up just cutting a single piece off of the front that fit around here. This is a steel door anyway, and um, I cut the front of the box back a little bit. Probably not factory specs, but um, I made sure that it was vented and it vents to the front. This closes and goes right around that, and I cut it back so I could pull it out farther so this would stick out of the door farther than normal. So I trimmed back the front of that metal cage, which didn't seem like it was doing anything other than just, you know, the size of the box. We have a fresh water pump in here, a bladder there to uh, keep the flow steady. Um, I have hot water outside and the cold water. So if you need to rinse something off or if you wanted to hang up a little outdoor shower thing, you could. So I put all that in there, just overkill, I guess it was. I do have the bypass if you wanted to switch this tank to the regular tank one and winterize it. This thing doesn't have to be winterized the same way as a normal one. You don't have to close it off and drain it. You just blow the lines out and it uh, cleans it out. This is a strainer. Everything plumbing wise, water pump, this is how you fill the tank, is all right in that box and goes out the back of the box 
and threw out the bus. We went to a surplus store that had rolls of this pipe insulation. So every pipe that I ran under there, I shoved that PEX pipe through that two inch foam sleeve and ran everything in foam sleeves. So I'm probably ready for some winter weather, but uh, I don't want to test it either though. No. Drive to where it's warm. <laughs> this one here is probably where I had the most complex challenges. Hold it out several times, put it back in several times. I put two, that is my black water tank and my gray water tank built in on bunk beds, essentially. So this tank is angled that way. They're just regular RV tanks that went down into a, they sat on the floor joist in your RV down through the floor, probably turned crossways. But I mounted two boards across the back, set them up on the shelf, and then put these across the front. But the toilet drains into this one, which is two layers of steel, the top fl floor in the bus, plus the top of the box. Very little room to do anything with to navigate in this gap. But I built them, marked them from the top, took them back out, cut them, stuck them back in. But they can be removed pretty easy. Everything is screwed together. You can take the screws out and drop it all, and pull it all out, with the exception of the drain lines that go down. This is my um, gray water tank. The shower comes in through the top, comes down and comes out the bottom, and then it comes out the other end. And then I have a dual drain. I can drain the gray or the black water separately, which is kind of cool, I guess. Wish these were a little bit bigger. Thought they were 40s. Best guess is they're 20s. Get about 15, 20 flushes and it's, and it's full. But wish they were bigger, but I wanted to build them in the box. Like I said, I didn't want to do any welding. Um, bigger tanks definitely would come in handy, but um, that's what we got, that's what we did. And yeah, I was here for a few days as well. <laughs> All of this is mounted down with um, clamps, but none of this is PVC pipe that I ducted all of my power up into the bus with, but it's not glued. It's just fitted together and then mounted down. Um, pulled all the wiring into here. I have two circuits that run off of the uh, inverter. This is an inverter charger, a trip light, 3000 watts, and I think it even boosts up to 6000 starting watts or something. It's a pretty gnarly thing but instant, I can pull the plug over there and it doesn't even glitch inside the RV. Everything stays on, that was on, with the exception of our AC units. So we turn the AC units off, unplug, everything else still works. And we're running on six golf cart batteries and this just has a, uh, a cover on it. And then again, I can pull these screws out. These are permanent on the sides, but those batteries can pull out. 250 amp dual breakers back there that's tripped a few times don't know what makes them trip i'll be honest with you so i'm not an electrician they've just popped off during the switch during the conversion i don't know if it's not ready or what but glad we have those because without those the reason it tripped could have been something getting hot or whatever so glad we have that to, to trip back there even though you're like what the heck was that turn it back on everything's been fine this is the surge guard um, our power comes in we have 50 amps it comes in, this protects you from electrical surge from uh, lightning and also a lot of RV parks, which we've had to happen like three times now, where we pull in and the voltage on the pole is too high. If it's over 132, I'm not gonna start quoting numbers. If it's too high or too low, it won't turn on. How about that? Yep. Read your manual. <laughs> but uh, it protects you from low voltage or high high voltage and it also protects you from lightning storm. So my power comes in here through the end, comes around, goes through that, goes in, goes up to the bus, and then I got two lines that come back down and run two of the circuits through the inverter that power most of our outlets through the bus, which in a bus, you know, two circuits is a lot. You can do six or seven each one, whatever, 10, however many. So that was fun. That's built on a little shelf so those two could stack so I could access everything here at the front if anything happened to any of it and a lot of wiring I made all our own wires all our own ends um, trying to buy that stuff custom is just not going to happen so to you know in order to fit in your type of space you know what you're working with the inverter came off of uh, craigslist again i think they sell for about 1200 
We found that one for 250, 200, 250. The guy said he'd give me my money back if it didn't work. I'm like, okay, it's worth a shot. First hooked it up, I didn't know how it worked. Actually, don't remember what I did wrong, but it wasn't working. Called the guy back, he said, hey, that thing, I'm pretty sure it worked. He wasn't gonna give me my money back. So, a bunch more YouTube videos and Voila, it actually did work, it was my fault. No problems, yeah, it's been great. And we saved a bunch of money on that. Yeah. <laughs> Save where you can and spend where you have to. That's kind of been our motto throughout the whole bus, you know? Yeah. Anyway, well, thanks for tuning in and check us out on Dusty Souls Bus. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, all the social media platforms. Check us out on YouTube and follow us. If you see us on the road, make sure to wave and honk. Um, right. We love meeting new people and that's why we do this, teach people that, you know, you don't need the home, you don't need the job necessarily. Um, you can go chase your dreams, whatever they might be. Just go make it happen, live your life. That's right, build, build yourself a bus. Yes, <laughs> bus life.